Um, before I uh, before I launch in, I um, actually it would be quite useful for me to have a quick show of hands as to uh, who uh, has not used Risk OSM. Uh, then I'll be able to tell whether I have to explain a lot. Or okay, about, about five or six or seven. Great. Um, well, I will. I will. Um, I will. Uh, I will uh, give you the brief introduction. Um, the uh, Risk OSM. Uh, brings OpenStreetMap uh, to RiskOS. OpenStreetMap is a project which has been likened to the Wikipedia of maps. It's, it's not got anything to do with Wikipedia, it's a separate uh, organization, but it's, that's the easy way to think about it. It's a, it's a map of the world which can be edited by anyone. Um, you can't edit it anonymously the way you can with uh, Wikipedia, you have to set up an account. Um, so it's slightly different in that respect, uh, and obviously it requires quite a lot more. Uh, it's a different sort of skill set from editing Wikipedia. Um, what people do, they uh, have their GPS devices. That could be something as simple as a smartphone, or it could be a more complex piece of kit. Um, they will record uh, the routes that they have travelled when driving along a road or cycling along a. A, a route or going for a walk in the country, um, they will upload it into the editor, the track that the GPS device has recorded, and then they'll be able to plot on the map the footpath uh, that perhaps has not yet been mapped on, on OpenStreetMap. As well as that, um, OpenStreetMap uses satellite imagery in quite a big way now, so you can overlay satellite imagery onto the map editor and uh, record the shapes of buildings. Um, if you record the buildings, that doesn't mean you know what the house number is, so people wander along streets and work out what the house numbers are, and then they record them on, their, on the map. So you, you, you will often find, you know, there's two or three um, editors, people who are editing the map in a, in, in a, in a town who are interested, who are, who are getting involved. Um, there are also big sources of government data in different countries, some of which have been incorporated into uh, the map. For example, in the Netherlands, uh, they have a big database of um, all the buildings in the Netherlands, and there's uh, data re related to that loaded in. Uh, the Czech Republic appears to have that kind of thing too. In this country, we have uh, information on the locations of bus stops and the unique IDs that allow you to look up the bus times and some of those have been incorporated into OpenStreetMap. So the source of OpenStreetMap data is quite uh, varied. Um, the quality of the maps is therefore also varied. Some, of the, some areas of the UK you will find immense amounts of detail. Other parts fairly poorly mapped. Um, good rule of thumb is if you find a university town they're usually pretty well mapped because there's students doing it with their latest smartphones and all that kind of thing. Um, and um, but, the, but the best way is to explore it. Now, exploring it using a RISCOS machine um, up to a year ago when we launched RISCOSM was rather difficult because uh, OpenStreetMap has a web uh, interface to the map, just like Google Maps and Bing um, and, and the other online mapping. But of course, it requires JavaScript to move about and, and, and won't work with NetSurf. So, um, we uh, got interested in, um, in OpenStreetMap. My wife started contributing to it a few years ago, and we wondered whether it would be possible to take the data and do something with it on the risk cost. And uh, if it hasn't become clear by now, I, what I ought to explain is that OpenStreetMap, unlike Google and Bing, is purely vector data. Um, it is points, latitude and longitude, uh, joined up to indicate roads, uh, joined up to indicate the boundaries of a forest or, or a building, um, individual points for small things like bus stops and for positioning the name of a town, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's all, it is all vector data. So that means you can take the data and do anything you like with it and render it in all sorts of different ways. There are people who are taking route information out of OpenStreetMap and rendering sort of the kind of 
map you would get of a bus route that you might have pasted up inside the bus or like a London Underground train. So it doesn't have to follow the uh, the shape of the shape of the land. Um, you could you can render it in all sorts of different ways. Um, so what we have done is uh, taken the OpenStreetMap data, which is free for anyone to use, there's no um, copyright restrictions on it other than that you have to acknowledge that it is OpenStreetMap copyright, that's the only thing you have to do, um, and we have processed it into a form where we can use it in RISCOS, um, and I ought to say RISCOS because that's how they used to say it at ACORN, and we've called our application RISCOSM because OSM is OpenStreetMap. Um, so um, the processing uh, is quite time consuming. If you go to the OpenStreetMap, um, there, there are various sources of OpenStreetMap uh, data, but uh, we've developed a little uh, conversion tool <coughs> called OSM Convert. Um, and in the help file, we recommend a particular site here. This is a consulting agency that does uh, OpenStreetMap data. And you can go to here and download uh, the data for, say, um, Andorra. That's going to be nice and quick. Um, I, could, I could demonstrate now. Um, we use these little files here, which we call OSM PBF files. Uh, I say little, but I mean uh, German is 2.4 gigabytes. Um, and when you open one of these files, um, if you can find an editor that can handle it, um, you'll find that, first of all, on the file are listed all of the points, all of the actual coordinates, latitude and longitude in the country that are used in any of the objects. And some of the points will have meaning in themselves. They will be, um, I keep on saying bus stops, there must be some other point features um, other than bus stops. Of course, there can be shops and things like that where it's, it's recorded that there is, a, there is a bank and no one has mapped the outline of the building yet, but it's still useful to know that there's a bank there, so the single point has been recorded. So there's all sorts of point features, and they're all listed first, but also all the points that are part of routes are listed. So you get all of the points first, and a lot of them don't say anything at all other than I'm, I'm at that position. And then you load all of the information about the ways, the routes, and the areas that are drawn out. And the ways tell you which nodes, which points are in them. So. Um, that they were further up the file by a few gigabytes, possibly. <laughs> uh, and then there's some further things which are called relations, and relations can contain ways and points, and they're things like, you know, a boundary of the county, which might be made up of a number of ways around the edge. It goes, follows along a river for a bit of the way, and then it goes off and it's over across a field, and then it comes around, you know. So if you were trying to take the, uh, how, how big is British Isles at the moment? Um, yeah, British Isles, 828 megabytes. If you're taking that and trying to fish out the bits of the country that would be suitable for rendering a map of Wakefield, um, you'd have quite a long wait fishing through 800 megabytes of data to work out what was relevant for the area of map that you're wanting to use. So our OSM Convert software processes all of this into um, a different shape. We essentially divide up the world into squares, of course it's not squares, but um, sections like that, um, and um, then the software can just load the relevant part, um, and if you're going across several squares it'll load the data from several squares and put it together. It's a bit more complicated about, uh, than that, and you can read all about how complicated it is in the help file for OSM Convert, because I've written a bit more to explain it now. Um, but the processing of that data, 828 megabytes of the British Isles, um, you need a big computer to do it. Uh, a gigabyte of RAM is pretty well essential if you're wanting to do it without getting bored. Um, and even then, on the uh, RMX6, uh, which we bought a few weeks ago, uh, it still takes about 10 hours to convert the British Isles data into the right format for, for RISC-ISM. Um, so, um, it's, it's funny actually to have written an application which uh, all the people trying to sign your new computers like to cite as something that you might want to do. <laughs> Why you might want to buy their computer so you can use the software, which is quite nice. But um, we'll, we'll get on to the actual application now.
now. Um, first of all, um, RISC OSM works best with RISC OS 5. If you're using RISC OS 3, RISC OS 4, RISC OS 6, it will run, at least with 3.7 onwards, we haven't tested with anything earlier. Um, and the problem is with the limited WIMP slot, the 26 megabyte limit for the WIMP slot for those operating systems, we don't have enough memory to easily render maps of more complicated areas. So I'll show you how much memory it uses after we've been doing a bit of browsing around in a moment and you'll get, get uh, the feel for it. It's not horrendously large amounts of memory, but it is more than 26 megabytes very often. Um, so, um, we, have, um, we have a new map window. Uh, at the moment I've got um, data sets for about seven countries uh, incorporated here, but we'll start off with the British Isles. Um, and let's go for, I don't know, let's go for Inverness. Um, sorry, I hope to explain what I'm doing here. Um, we have a gazetteer based on all the place names that we found in the OpenStreetMap database. As I start typing, it'll show you um, what they might be. Oh, Invention Wood. Sounds intriguing. Well, we'll go for Invention Wood. I've never seen that before. Um, and it's putting now the latitudes and longitudes, the coordinates. It's also worked out what the ordnance survey grid reference is for that location. And we have a menu here to choose the scale. The scale is chosen automatically depending on the sort of place you're looking at. So if it's a city, it'll come out at 1 in 40,000, I think. And if it's, a, you, if it's a village, it'll go in a bit uh, uh, further. Um, so we'll just uh, draw a map. Uh, it's loaded the data off the disk. <coughs> the data is stored on your hard disk. So you will need 700 meg free on your hard disk. Most people have quite a bit free on their hard disk if they've got a new machine because we haven't got video editing software, so you're not filling stuff up with that. Um, but um, anyway, we see here, um, it, looks very, it looks squashed actually on this screen, on the projector and on the screen in front of me, but it's, um, it really ought to be, oh no, oh great, I would pick somewhere where there is some bug. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like the whole place is underwater. <laughs> right, I'm going to... I'm just going to save that because some of you will want to look into that. I expect it's the location. Um, I'll put that there and we'll. Um, oh dear. Um, there, that's a bit better. Um, <laughs> that's that's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, one, one, of the, one of the trickier problems you might you might find it surprising is trying to work out which bits are underwater and which bits aren't. And the only way you can tell whether there ought to be water there is whether you can see some coastline. If there's no coastline in the map, then it's either completely underwater or completely not. <laughs> if it's completely underwater, then usually you don't see any features. Um, and so Hillary has to kind of work out which it is. Um, <laughs> well, that, that was a bit puzzling. Anyway, we can see here, we've got, we've got a map. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on here. Um, and, oh, right, there's uh, Coombe Martin Wildlife and Dinosaur Park. Sounds, uh, sounds exciting. Yes. Anyway, I'm, I'm just zooming out a bit. Um, we've tried to make, oh, it's Africa. Right, okay. Advanced support. Yeah. Oh, I've been there. Right. Um, what you're seeing there, I'm moving about the map, we've tried to make it as intuitive as possible. So you can drag with a mouse and pull the, pull the thing about like this. When you, when you, when you let go, it'll, it'll, it'll draw the bits that, uh, um, you know, that you, you, you dropped off the end. We've tried to make it responsive, so if you change your mind and move it again, it'll, it'll let you. It'll then have to possibly <coughs> reload some more data and, and put it up on the screen. Um, but we tried to make it responsive, so that although it will take a while to render the more complicated areas, you, you never stopped from moving the map about, changing the scale, um, that kind of thing. Um, so, because uh, what it's doing here is quite a complicated job. It would be nice, actually, in the information window uh, to display 
how many objects there are that this is rendered because there's a lot of points there that just have to be um, plotted. And if we zoom in on a bit of coastline, uh, for example, you'll see there's all this uh, jiggling around and all that detail has got to go into the, into the map. Um, unlike draw, we're used to Bezier curves and draw and, and drawing curvy stuff. In OpenStreetMap, it is all straight lines. Uh, the points are just joined up with straight lines. If people have put enough <coughs> points in, you don't really notice the difference too much. Um, and it's, it's a great relief that they did it like that from the point of view of the programmer, because it makes it much, much simpler <laughs> to render it. Um, so um, because it is a um, because it's a vector system, you can out output draw files. Uh, once the draw file has been exported, you can go into draw and um, I think we have to ungroup it probably, can't remember now. Uh, of course I need to select that. <coughs> anyway, you see here's, here's, uh, here's, a, here's a place name and um, I can then uh, move it somewhere else. You know, redesign things, you can put other annotations on. Uh, it will also export sprites if you want to. If that's particularly useful, if it's a very complicated area of the country that took a long time to render on screen, you can output a sprite so it doesn't take so long um, if you're using it in a form where that's suitable. Um, and there is a lot of uh, interaction uh, based in this thing. I'm just going to go to a postcode. This is my parents' postcode. Um, we've got postcodes from British Isles and from this release also the Netherlands available. Um, so it's loading, uh, loading an area here. Um, and if we zoom in a bit on the centre of uh, Beeston, which is just near Nottingham, um, you'll see there's a lot of detail. Someone has done uh, a lot of uh, satellite imagery for um, bus stops, uh, sorry, for, for houses. And, why am I focusing on bus stops? It's, really it's probably because I'm thinking, ah oh, yes, I need to control click to see the next bus is from the stop. And there you are. Uh, you can get a bus, the Y5 to Derby, and uh, um, about now actually, so I don't think we'll catch that one. Um, since I last demonstrated this at the Wakefield show last year, the uh, tram has now been completed through the middle of Beeston and the data has been updated to reflect that. It's not running yet, but <laughs> maybe eventually. Um, and um, yeah, so we, we give links to websites because the websites of various places are recorded in the, um, in the uh, data. Uh, there can sometimes be a, a, lots of additional information. Actually, this shows up a bug we need to sort out because this, someone has actually recorded the inscription on this war memorial. It's a rather unusual war, war memorial because it's a Crimean war memorial and not very many of them. Um, and so someone has actually recorded the whole inscription into the OpenStreetMap database. But I think we need to get it to wrap round so you can read it on the screen because um, uh, never mind. Um, we'll sort that out one day. Um, so you can click on this information thing and hover over stuff and it'll give you information um, about the different areas. Um, uh, stuff that you wouldn't see in the map just by, just by looking at it like that. You can also search. Um, so suppose we knew that there was um, Hallam Road around here but you couldn't see it on the map. Uh, we could just search for Hallam and there is uh, Hallam Road highlighted over here. And the information will automatically appear for, for, for them. Or you could um, select different types of uh, feature. So there's a memorial again, two memorials. Um, or you can, and this is all done by uh, the, the, the street map tagging um, standards. So we can find, um, oh dear, some maps of trees. Yes, some individual trees have been mapped on OpenStreetMap. Um, there are a few places where lamp posts have been mapped, but um, uh, we have had to throw out some of the data because it's, some bits were getting a bit too big. So we have thrown out, we might have thrown out lamp posts, I can't remember. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> We've left the trees on because actually they, they can be quite, you know, they, they don't take up. There's not too many of them in maps and they do look all right. <laughs> but I don't know how we'd actually represent a lamp post if we left them on. Um, pillar boxes, yeah, sometimes people record the pillar box. Uh, they sometimes just record um, what uh, king or queen is mentioned on the pillar box. It's for pillar box fanatics. And the power lines, um, you know, you, you, you will get for pylons, sometimes they will be recording information about what the design of electricity pylon the pylon is. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that's pylon appreciators who are doing that, or whether it's just that the data has been uploaded from somewhere where that information already is in the public domain. It's, it's hard to know. Anyway, um, I'd better, golly, I've, I've used up almost half my time without telling you anything. Um, <laughs> New features. Um, I better just run through quickly what we've got for new features. Um, we, um, I'll, I'll sort of go backwards. Um, this release uh, today, we have postcodes for the Netherlands. We have the um, national grid systems for the Netherlands and Ireland um, added. Um, we have. Uh, copy and paste and drag and drop for the uh, new map window, um, so uh, we can we can take that and well probably more importantly drop things onto here, um, so that if you want to copy a place name or postcode in, it's, it's it's dead easy to do it now. Um, we've got um, and, and the major one is uh, managing uh, data sets. We've been um, in the past we have um, issued data which has been based country by country, and if people wanted to swap between one country and another, they had to double click the data um, application and switch over to the Netherlands, say, or Belgium. What they couldn't do, however, was have the Netherlands and Belgium active at the same time, which made things difficult if you were on the border of uh, a country. So we'll go to, um, we'll go to Aachen. Oh, hang on, I need to choose Germany. There we are, Aachen. Um, and draw the map of Aachen. Which is quite close to the to the uh, Netherlands and the Belgian border, <coughs> um, and what Risk OSM is now able to do is to is to draw the data from several different data sets and paste it back together. So here's the uh, that's the border with the Netherlands. Uh, this bit is Belgium over here, and this is Germany. And I'm hoping actually, let's just try this feature. As if we oops, wrong application. We choose. I'm going to choose the preferred language on the map as French. Um, and we'll just see whether the name of Arkham changes to what I think it ought to. Um, it's slash la phone. So you see, um, it's much more versatile than a bitmap map because there's all sorts of things you can change about it. Another new thing we've added uh, just for this uh, release is a new style. We've got a monochrome style which um, will um, render um, the map with improved contrast to printing out on a black and white printer um, because not everyone is printing out on colour. Um, so it isn't actually totally monochrome because the trees and stones are still green, but you know, it, the important thing is the contrast is better because with the all colour map, if you printed them out grayscale, it was a bit hard to follow. So that's, um, that's a nice little extra. Um, so uh, those are the those are the main new features. The new features that we've added since the launch last year, um, many of you will already be aware of, as you're already using the software. Um, but uh, we focused on quite a lot of work to do with um, overlaying pins and tracks and stuff like that. Um, I've got a little demo here. Um, GPS stuff. Here we are. Um, if I drop this uh, GPX file, which I pulled off the, uh, the phone this morning. Um, we recorded this on the phone on the way here, and you should be able to see the routes that we took uh, to drive to um, to drive to the show this morning. If we zoom in on here, uh, you'll be able to see which route we took around the car park <laughs> and where the car was parked before. Well, it, I don't know whether it's still parked there because we moved it to unload things. <laughs> We did, we did stay on the road, I do have to point out, we were on the road, not some, um, uh, there, there are inaccuracies both in GPS 
tracking from a phone, uh, but also the widths of roads and things will not always be totally precisely right on the open street map anyway. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, and um, we, we, so we've added quite a lot of features to do with that. Uh, you can now um, draw out uh, your own routes as well. Um, I don't think that would be a good one to go, uh, go along. Um, and, and areas too, if you're wanting. And when you draw out the areas and the, and the routes, it will show you down the bottom um, the, uh, the perimeter and the area in hectares. You can turn on acres as well from the choices if you want to. It's just quite handy for tracing out things and, and seeing, seeing what's, you know, you can plan out a route and see how long it will be um, by doing that kind of method. Um, and at the Southwest show, we introduced a feature for saving these. So there is a pins and tracks window uh, where you can select uh, a number of, um, of these. Uh -oh. Hang on, what's going on here? It's not control click, is it? <coughs> I thought we were meant to be able to right click and get several of them. That's a bit funny. I'll have to look into that. Um, yeah, it's not doing it, is it? Right, okay. I, um, we, we can't, we're meant to be able to select several of them and uh, export, uh, so you can export them as GPX as well, which means you could load them back into your phone or GPS device and you can follow that route along on the ground if you want to. Uh, we added various features for, you know, showing the heights of hills and different units and um, JPEGs as well. Uh, Often modern cameras and smartphones will uh, record the um, latitude and longitude that the photo was taken. Uh, one of those didn't have a latitude or longitude in, um, but one of the photos was taken there and the other one was taken over here. I don't know what these are of actually. Oh, aha, yes, that's the play park in Allegate. Photo taken from there, looking towards the um, looking towards the uh, roundabout. <laughs> um, so that can be really handy if you've got a, if you've got a camera like that, you can then drop the things onto Risk OSM and see where you actually took the photo if you can't remember. Um, and we've also added things like uh, being able to um, enlarge the window. Uh, not just the map. So this is just enlarging the window without actually zooming in. Because when you zoom into a different scale, different features will appear and others will be rendered differently. But you can you can enlarge or, or decrease like that as well. Um, so um, I I said uh, one, one of the things I, would, uh, I was going to uh, talk about was uh, possible plans for the future for the software because we got quite a lot of ideas. Um, for things we could add, and I thought I might just float a few of them and just, uh, by show of hands, take a quick straw poll as to which things you think are the most going to be the most useful, and then we might know what to concentrate on. It's, it won't be promising whether we'll actually do them in that order because some things are easy and some things are really hard. But um, so, um, I, and, and we have had. I mean, the, the, the list, the list of ideas. I think oh, there's at least 40 different things in this list. So I'm not actually going to go through them all now. Um, but new ones keep on getting added. Uh, for example, at the Southwest show, Martin Hansen of Mathematical Software was there, and he's uh, trying to develop a Raspberry Pi-based um, system uh, for doing uh, charts for navigation at sea. Uh, so he's got his Raspberry Pi hooked up by the GPIO pins to some sort of uh, um, GPS uh, device. Um, and he's got some quite nice software for showing that. We had someone at the stand today who was also interested, has that kind of device uh, for um, navigating around canals in the Netherlands. Um, so it would be quite good to be able to hook up uh, GPS, sort of live GPS data devices to then be able to plot your course on the map as you travel. Um, so that's just one idea, but it then opens a whole can of worms like how on earth do we test that when we haven't got the equipment? And um, uh, one of these devices connects via USB, the other one connects via the direct to the pins on the motherboard. And um, 
you know, how do you abstract all of that so that different sorts of software can work with the, these different bits of equipment. So, anyway, um, I'll just run through them and if people would like to, I, I'll ask for a show of hands and I'll just get a vague feel for how many people are interested. One of the things that um, we have been asked for, I'm just going to, oops, let's go back to the net, uh, to Business Trials. Uh, One of the things we get asked for is, could we be, could we turn off some of the, the features? And I can see why, because if you look at the middle of Nottingham, say, uh, you get uh, lots of um, lots of detail there, and uh, as we zoom in, you'll see uh, the town centre, and there's masses and masses of, um, oh, where are they all gone? I'd probably have to go in one more zoom level. Uh, we then suddenly get inundated with lots of little icons uh, for different types of shops and, uh, well, pubs, uh, particularly at that level. And if we go in a bit further, we will have masses of icons um, for all the different clothes shops and this, that, and the other. So one idea would be a, a simple list somewhere where you could tick, 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 which sorts of things you want to actually be there and which things you don't want to be there. Who would be interested in that? Okay, uh, I don't know how I'm going to write the numbers down, um, but uh, I, I'm going to <coughs> estimate. Um, and I've done part of my pen isn't working. Has anyone got a pen? <laughs> Thank you. Um, another idea is um, a, an editor which would allow you to see the different colours that are used on the map and say, well, actually, everything that that's, that's that colour, I would like to modify that colour because then you could develop different styles of map. Uh, fairly well. If you decide you don't like all the shops being bright purple, you could change it to something else. Um, anyone interested in that idea? No one? Oh, come on. Okay, well. Um, next idea, this is sort of related, um, would be a, a full style editor. Uh, this would be a feature where uh, you would have all the details about what zoom level the, each, each feature appears, uh, what um, icon it might have, whether the text is shown along the road or, or you know, um, which, which tags are used to work out what feature is what. And in other words, a simpler way of developing your own style sheets because we do have the style sheet system already, but um, actually, first show of hands, has anyone tried editing their own style sheets? Great. Well, the documentation was worth doing for one person. I was talking to Hillary at Southbridge, she said, have a go. Right. It's very easy, that's why I'm not bothered about the colours, because it just changes the colours. Yeah, the yeah, well, I mean, the colours are just uh, just defined in here, that's a particular sort of grey or black. And so we've got the style sheets, and you can edit them uh, in there. But you might feel, ooh, that's a bit scary for me, I'd like something that will help me do that. Anyone interested in that kind of thing? A reasonable number. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, that would that would be a super set. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a full style editor would be able to do even more than the, 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 the ordinary, the simple tick. Another idea: we've got this ability to draw uh, to draw routes along, but we've had a suggestion, and I think possibly we thought of it ourselves as well, that it would be quite handy when you place a point for it actually to follow the road. <laughs> that you're clicking along. So you don't actually have to click, 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 and click, but you could click there and click a fair way along, and it would notice that these two points were on the same thing, and it would sort of go and join it up. And then you'd be able to actually plot routes and measure them without having to do so many clicks. Who would like that? Oh, everyone would like that. Right, OK. Um, we've got the ability to load in GPX files. So they have um, a system of latitude and longitude, and you can record points and ways in them, and you overlay them, and, and it appears on the map. But uh, we know that there are a number of other sorts of files that contain this kind of data. One obvious thing would be a sort of some various forms of CSV file. So an idea would be to be able to load a CSV file containing points um, that have different features. Someone, for example, has some data which um, is locations of signal boxes on railway lines in Ireland, and he's got uh, details in the Irish national grid system. Now, 
At the moment, we can only cope with latitude and longitude, but if you could load in a CSV file using a national grid system and then produce pins on the map, um, or load in a, a file which contains some sort of uh, route that's plotted in something other than GPX, who will be interested in that kind of feature? Uh, a few. Okay, some of, these, some of these are going to be really easy to do and some of them are harder, so some of them might actually happen even though hardly anyone's asked for them. It depends on, <laughs> it depends on, it depends on what we actually find fun to do as well, because somebody has to enjoy doing this. Um, and, and also, some of the things that we're thinking about will then open the way for further developments in the future. Um, running out of time. Um, some people have asked about a key to the map. Um, Obviously, you can hover over things when you're using the um, when you're using the um, thing. So I'm just going to finish that that way. You can hover over stuff, and down at the bottom, it will tell you it's a crossing pedestrian lights on Maid Marian Way, uh, which is obviously more than you can get from a from a key. But if you print the thing out, you might well want to have a key. Um, or yeah, a key could be combined with the style editor. Different ways of doing things. Would people be interested in a way that you could export um, a kind of key to the map as a draw file which you could then bung into your, um, wherever you're reusing it? Would people be interested in that? Well, maybe one or two. Thank you. Another idea is this list of pins. We've got this list of pins. Uh, oh, which I've forgotten. There we are, F10. Um, this list of pins, and you might have got uh, a number of features and descriptions of them. Being able to export that, would that be useful so you could include it in something else? Okay, good. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, would anyone like to be able to open multiple maps? You can only do one at once at the moment. No? Okay. Um, and uh, non-Western characters, Cyrillic, Greek, anyone interested in that? Because we don't support it very well at the minute. No, no one interested in that anyway. Okay, I think that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot the crucial one, which is who wants to run it on RISCOS 4 or 5 so we can deal with the dynamic area issue? I've got that. Part 2. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>